Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode 69 of the Crochet Circle podcast. How are you all doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, I, ca- I cannot believe it's almost October. I probably say this every month, but firmly in my head, I was like, oh, it's August. We're about to go into September. In the show notes, everything said, see you in September, global hookups for September. I just could not get my brain around the fact that we're actually going into October. So um, please can I have September back because I don't feel like I've had any of it. Um, It's been busy. I've been to yarn shows again. Yay! Actual hugging people with masks on, with disinfectant on, but hugging my lovely yarny family and... Um, if you've been to a uh, yarn shop and Murit has launched and we've got a cal coming, there's there's just so much amazing stuff that has happened and amazing stuff that's coming up. So it's lovely to be back here with you. Um, sh- where should we start? Like if you're viewing, you can see <laughs> a massive pile of yarn in front of me because I have shopped. So there is quite a large update in um, in Feeding the Habit. Um, most of it has got plans as well, and quite immediate plans too. So yeah. hopefully you didn't hear that. That was a very noisy car going past. Um, shall we just dig in? Let's. I think we're going to start with the the cow. So I know I said no more cows because there's so much work, but um, I'm not running it. It's Claudia from Crochet Luna that's running it, which just makes life so great and easy. And she asked if I wanted to be one of the designers involved in the cal. And hell yeah, I do. Of course I do. Um, So there's a load of us. And the whole premise is that it runs from the 1st to the 31st of October 2021. Um, if you go and look at the hashtag on Instagram, which is hashtag stashtober21, um, there's loads of information under that. And basically, you work from stash. You don't buy new yarn. You have a month to make a pattern from any of the designers that are listed out by Claudia. And you have a month to make that design. You can use um, whips. They're fine. I think it's so long as they are 50% or less done. Come and join us. I've been stash diving. I know lots of other people have been stash diving too. I think there are some positivity spiral cowls going to be made. Um, I was speaking to somebody who's going to make Gudrun out of um, the Murat magazine, which is Rosina's pattern. I know somebody else is making a fisherman's beanie, which is one of Michelle Dora Explored's um, patterns. So there's, I know that people are getting ready for this cal already since it's been put out on Instagram. But let me tell you who the other designers are that are involved. We have got me. Hello. Um, Rosina from Zins and Roger. You've got Hannah from the Cozy Cottage um, Crochet. You've got Clarissa Beth from Crochet Cakes. Kalisha from Nadira, uh, Nadira Tani. That, that's how I was it, Nadira Tani. Michelle from Dora Explored. And you also have Heather from HG Designs Crochet. So you've got a real mix with those designers of um, like granny squares, granny stripes, colourful bright rainbows, stash busters, garment makers, shawl lovers. Um, and then, you you know what my stuff is like, I like the kind of um, more subtle end of crochet. I think that's... I, that's the best way that I can put it. I'm, you know, I'm not big on big rainbows, but um, so that between all of the designers, you've got people that you could do like a proper little bitty scrappy stash bust with, and then the designs that I've put forward are more ones where you could like pick up those special skeins that you've never used, put them together, and use three of them in one go. Or like a, there is a stash buster blanket in there that you could do as well. So between all of those designers, you've got a proper mix of different projects that you could be working from. And um, I've added all of this detail into the show notes already. Michelle um, from Dora Explored on Instagram has already pulled together a roundup pattern blog post for you. Rosina has done something similar. She's got a blog post and she also has a 25% discount code. And um, it's Hannah 
from the Cozy Cottage Crochet has put in a 15% discount code. So all of that is available. Just go and check out the show notes. The links are there. Everything that you need is there. Um, and t- basically, take to Instagram. Hannah is also running a thread on Ravelry. I, I won't be in there. I'll be checking out what's happening on Instagram. But if any of you um, are still Ravelers, Ravelers, I still can't say Ravelry. If any of you are still Ravelers, then there is a, a thread in there already set up and I think it's already active. So go and take a look at that if you can. Um, I think that's all I need to say about the cal, other than I'm going to do something from it. So I have already been a stash diving and I found two balls of a really luxurious yarn that I bought when I was in New Zealand. It's from a company called Outlaw Yarn, um, proudly made in New Zealand, and it's from their Bohemia range, which is a worsted weight yarn. And it's got proper fuzz on it, this yarn. And the reason it's got proper fuzz on it is because it is 45% Polworth, so lovely, smooth, but quite um, a poofy wool, which you get a lot of in uh, New Zealand. Polworth is like one of their main breeds. 45% alpaca, so again, fuzz, warm, soft, like almost a, a silkiness to it. And 10% possum, and possum is just so nice to work with. Um, not for everybody, because of um, like the management of possums within the ecosystem. But in New Zealand, they're a non-native species, and I'm down with um, conservation. And so that's why you can get possum yarn. Um, so that is a really lovely worsted blend, and I have got a proper, proper mustard obviously and like a petrol bluey um green that's going to go with that so i've got 200 grams to play with and i went searching through all of the designers and the one that i pitched for was michelle dora does at dora explored her scandi beanie hat um it's a stash buster and you can pretty much make it your own um so that's what i'm planning to do and i might actually be able to do two out of these two yarns if i invert them and then um, I will make one for one of my nieces. So either Darcy Do or um, Holly, who um, Matthew just told me last night is suffering with circulation. So um, it might be a Holly hat if she likes mustard and, t- and like petrol bluey teal. If she doesn't, I'll happily make her other things. So that's what I'm up to. I was looking at doing a garment and I was like, Faye, do not overcommit yourself. Stop this nonsense. Make something small. You can easily make two small things if you find you have more time on your hands. Do not commit to a garment to make in a month. Like, ridiculousness. So, I'm not making a garment, I'm making a hat. But that's what I'm on for the cow. So please do come and join us. Um, it looks really quite active and Claudia is back she's had a little hiatus from podcasting and she's now back into season 5 so it's lovely to have her back and lovely to see that she's doing this cow so we're going to move on to old dog new tricks and I've got um, I've got a cracker for you today actually thinking about the stash buster cow really made me think about what might stop somebody using a specific yarn in a specific pattern if it's the wrong weight but it's the look that they were looking for so what I've done is pull together quite a comprehensive blog post on how you can combine more than one strand of um of yarn to make a heavier weight of yarn basically so me being me obviously I went to town and did it like in a very researched way and I have swatched up loads of samples and they go through from one strand of heavy lace weight right the way through to five strands of heavy lace weight to try and replicate a chunky, like proper um, chunky yarn on a six mil hook. And out of that gave me a load of data that I could then plop into an Excel spreadsheet and then I could work out how many strands of what different weights of yarn could be held together and what you would get from them so all of that is in the blog post but what I wanted to just touch on today is some rough basics of how you can make it work 
like most accurately. So if I take a look at this one here is an eight ply yarn. So it's a, it's an a, a, like a, pr a pretty standard iron weight. It is 200 meters per 100 grams. It's the Ashford uh, Tecapo yarn. Again, it was another one that I got in New Zealand. So that is 200 meters per 100 grams. And the next square that I crocheted up was a John Arban Textiles Knit by Numbers 4 ply, which is 400 meters per 100 grams. So by holding that double, I have basically replicated what the Aran weight yarn was. They're really, really similar in terms of gauge, in terms of the square size. They are a really, like it's the easiest way to replicate and I used the same hook size for them as well. And so what I found using that idea and that system through all of these swatches is that the most accurate way to strand yarns together is to try and get the exact amount of meters or grams per meter. So, and that's what I did with that first one. I was able to do it again using five strands of a heavy lace weight yarn to try and replicate a chunky weight yarn. And again, that was another very exact measurement because the chunky is 140 meters per 100 grams. The lace weight is 700 meters per 100 grams, so five strands held together gives me 140 meters per 100 grams. Now, these yarns obviously are slightly different and it's on a much bigger swatch. So there is a little bit of size change, but not by much. Um, and obviously, if you're not using the yarn that the designer has given in the pattern, you're going to get differences in gauge anyway. So this is not a reason to not do a gauge swatch. This is just a way of looking at your stash a little bit differently and thinking, well, I've got loads of lace weight or I've got loads of four ply and I need like DK or Aran or Chunky and I can strand together to be able to get that and make it work. So it was, um, it was an interesting experiment because what I found from it, let me find the... Which other one did I do? Three and it wasn't. What I found was that if you had um, a heavier, so let me show you. What I'm holding up is a swatch of um, a DK weight yarn, which is John Urban Textiles Knit by Numbers, and also their and knit by numbers in the four ply. And whilst they came out pretty similarly in terms of size, actually the drape is ever so slightly different. So the DK is lighter than using two strands of the four ply together because that is 400 meters. So 200 meters per 100 grams, two stranded. And the DK is 250 meters per 100 grams. So whilst I'm getting a really similar size in the swatch, and therefore the gauge is pretty much the same. The drape and the density of the fabric is different. So that's one of the things to be aware of and take into account. And one of the reasons I was using these two is because they are the exact same blend of fibres. So they're both um, Falklands Merino. It's the same fibre base is used for both of them, but hopefully you can see, I mean, not a lot, but it's, it's marginal, but there is more drape to the DK because it's got an extra 50 meters um, per 100 grams than the four ply two strand version does because it's only got 200. So they are the same size swatch, but the drape is different. Therefore the fabric is different. So like I said, you still have to swatch, but if you have got, um, let's say you've got an 800 meter lace weight in your stash that you're never going to use, and it's going to pair really nicely with the four ply that you have got. You could make an Aran weight yarn by using one strand of your four ply, two strands of your 800 meters per 100 gram lace weight, and that will give you 200 meters per 100 grams. 
I'm sure I have lost some of you and others of you will be following the pattern and you, you can see how this works by trying to keep to the same um, metres per gram. So what I've done, or what I'm about to do, because I'm woefully behind with this podcast, is um, over the course of today and tomorrow, I will finish off that blog post. And then that my intention is to have a table where it will list out all of the different um, meterage over 100 grams and what two strands will get you. So what kind of yarn you would be replicating if you did two strands, three strands, four strands, all the way up to, I think the most amount I did was 13, which I can't see anybody ever pulling together 13 strands of lace weight, but somebody might just have a lot of lace weight. Um, And I've photographed all the swatches and popped them into the show notes, but if you're looking for an iron weight yarn and you don't have it in your stash, and you've got two skeins of um, a four ply, pull them together and see what fabric you get out of it. Um, What I would say is that blend will always have a big impact on it and so will how the the yarn has been made. So all of the ones that I was working with pretty much are worsted spun, which means all of the fibres are combed into the same direction so you get a lovely smooth yarn. Um, The one that I did try that was ever so slightly different was a... um, slightly twisted roving from Garthena which is their lace weight and because it's not just quite smooth it came out to be a little bit bulkier. So look at the yarn that the pattern is suggesting and try and get something that matches the same type basically Um, if you want to be as accurate as possible. That's what I would suggest. But the fabrics that I got out Um, of even plying five swatches together are really quite nice that you can probably see that there are extra strands in there it just gives a little bit more stitch definition and if anything you know when you do like um, a bobble stitch because you've got all of those strands of the ply it just gives you a little bit more of a bobble stitch type texture when you're using that many strands together Um, But yeah, it was an interesting piece of work to be able to pull together because I I figured it was probably hold double to get the same meterage um, per grams, but it's nice to know that that is exactly what it is, that that gives you your best chance of being able to um, use multiple strands to recreate a new heavier yarn weight. Um, Can I just... Add to that, many thanks to um, my lovely patron supporters because this type of in-depth work that I can do is only possible through your support. Um, so like, I don't do extra videos and extra content for patron. I just, I can't. Um, but, and I think stuff like this is far more useful because it's skill building and it's knowledge building for within our little crafting community and I think that's much more helpful. So by the time I've written up this blog post, this is about three days worth of work to get to this point and that is only possible because of the support through patrons. So thank you to you lovely, lovely patron people. This is what you allow me to do. You allow me to get in depth and do the research and blog about it for the good of the wider community like it's not just you that gets to see this stuff everybody does so thank you like i say there's a blog post up there with all the details go forth and have a look at it my intention is to also um record this as a separate little snippet as an old dog new tricks which you can go up onto instagram and also to um pull together a load of slides and pop them up to instagram as a guide so you've always got quick and easy access through the um crochet underscore circle underscore podcast um instagram account and hopefully i'll be doing more of that over the coming months now that i'm not finding it yarn shows Um, I want to be doing more of this type of work and kind of getting back into some of the more intricate details of crafting that I used to do and the knowledge and skills building. So, I think that's it for how to strand and make heavier weight yarns for now. So, final destinations. 
Um, I promise I have finished things. I just can't show you most of them because um, one of them is a design for a commission that you won't see until six months' time, um, which is on the blocking mats over there, uh, happily blocking away. And um, yeah, so I won't be able to show that one until it's actually released in the magazine. And um, the other one I have already sent down to John Urban Textiles because they have released some new shades in their Devonia yarn. And they got in touch and asked if I could crochet up a new sample for them with the new colours. Obviously, yes, of course I can. Um, I love that they represent crochet and I managed to get it down to them in time because they were doing Yarn Deal as an online yarn show for them. And they had uh, the crocheted version of my four ply loft shawl on the mannequin as part of their Yarn Deal setup. So that was really nice to see. Um, so they brought out six new shades. The two, that I, two new shades that I was working from is a proper um, mid-green, quite a yellowy green, which they have called Sugar Snap. And for me, it's like the inside of a Sugar Snap pod, not like the outside. It's a bit more subtle, so it really does have that yellow tone to it. I was also using Fur Bellows, which is a proper dark forest green, um, which is lovely. Again, it's quite heathered, so it's got hints of... Um, yellow in that too so these two actually work really well together and then I that was paired with an existing colour of theirs which is called Sandbar which is a, um, a phony brown colour and the three were just really lovely together and so I've got some photos that I'll add in of how the loft looked in those um, colours but I'd really love some feedback from you if that's okay because when we moved from our old house, I used to have a full studio with an amazing blank wall that I took loads of product shots against. And I tried that here on the wall behind me and it was okay. But I also tried taking photos um, against the brick wall. We've got a barn that runs the length of our property. And I tried taking some photos against the brick wall. And I think they're okay, but it also feels a little bit fussy to me. But that might just be because I'm used to using a very plain wall. So... I'm going to pop two photos up. Can you let me know whether you think the red brick wall is too fussy or not? Or if I should just get over myself, feel free to tell me on Instagram and in the YouTube comments, get over yourself, Faye, it's fine. <laughs> um, but I'm just, I'm trying out new and I don't want, I don't want to take attention away from the designs, but I do want to have a nice um, photography set up. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, is that that? Is that everything I've done? Oh, I also sewed up the, well, sewed up, crocheted up the stitches for survival panels. So I sat and did that over the last global hookup <laughs> sessions and managed, there was one panel and I managed to crochet it together to the other panels upside down. So then I had to frog it in the session. Then I re it and I sewed it back to front and I was by that point I was in a huff and was like, right, I'm doing this later because I need I need to think about this. <laughs> so they are all pulled together and had it's just been bogging weather for the last few days. Um so I had hoped to be able to show you them all pinned out on the the fence over the road from our house, but the weather's too horrible and I don't want to get all of the yarn wet. So as soon as I get a little break in the weather, I will take some photos and some videos and I'll have them ready to add to next month's show notes and I will also pop them up on Instagram so you can have a proper look. So for en route, um, like I haven't moved anything on that I was talking about last month. So my dad's jumper, I've done nothing with it. Um, there was another project. Oh, the bag, I've done nothing with that. It's just... I've done a lot of travel this month and um, so crafting, I like, I just want to do more crafting and time is never on my side and I'm really rubbish at taking time off and just sitting and doing what I want to do. So that's something I'm trying to address and get better at. Um, but So the only thing I have actually worked on besides the samples and um, commissions is a new pair of socks for my best friend, Jenny. Jenny, if you're watching this, shut off. You're not allowed in. <laughs> Stop looking. Um, <clears throat> J 
Jenny is having a big birthday soon. She's going to be 40. And she's having a fairly cruddy time of it at the moment as well. And she loves hand knitted socks. She loves the socks that I make her. But she always says, I'm just drawn to the colours. <laughs> so if I make her like non Jenny colour socks, she's less likely to wear them. If I make them in Jenny pink, then she's very likely to wear them. Um, Jenny has a nickname within our group. And this is Jenny Pink, basically. It's a fuchsia bright pink and it's right up her street. And I've been pairing it with a little turquoise mini for contrast, um, quite a, a light turquoise, which is another Jenny colour. Um, so my intention was not to write this up as a design, but when I started making it and I was just making it off the top of my head, I was like, oh, I quite, actually quite like it. So I've done a contrast rib at the top with little lines, um, so it's predominantly in the turquoise, with little lines coming down the rib in um, Jenny Pink. And then I've mimicked that in the heel flap as well, so the pink is the main colour, but I've got lines of the turquoise coming down, and my intention is to do the same on the toe as well. Um, so this this wouldn't be a pay for pattern. I'll probably use this as a freebie for newsletter signups uh, for people. But I've seen to Matthew. I've there's a name that I really want to call the pattern, but it's got a swear word in it. <laughs> I don't I don't think I can use it, but it's Jenny's nickname. And he was like, "Oh, you just call it the Fussy Fox socks." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, clever." So these are the uh, Fussy Fussy Fox socks, and from that you can pretty much guess what Jenny's nickname is. She is a very fussy fox. Um, so yeah, fussy fox socks, which is a real mouthful, will be coming out um, shortly at some point. I need to get them passed through them, and I obviously need to get these done quickly because it is Jenny's birthday in just over a week. Um, so I need to get cracking with them and uh, yeah, get the socks done. Get the Fussy Fox socks done. So that is literally the only thing that I have got en route, but I thought it was quite entertaining that um, Jenny's nickname is going to be used in a design. She knows I'm doing it as well. I was like, this is what we're calling them. She thought it was very funny. And I think she also agreed that nobody would want me to swear. <laughs> Hence, I'm not swearing. <laughs> right. And really, we're on to the main party now of the web, of the uh, podcast, which is my yarn and stuff that I brought back from two yarn shows and a wool shop. There is quite an amount. So let me take you through what I have. I'm going to do it, I think, um, show by show so that you can see the different vendors over there. So the, actually, let me just come back. The socks I was just showing up, the Fussy Fox Socks yarn, is um, by Hannah and Lydia at Wiku Yarns. And it's a standard four-ply in that bright fuchsia pink, and the mini is also from them. Um, and the mini doesn't have a name, but I will link to these yarns in the show notes. And when I was at Hannah and Lydia's stall and I saw this pink, I was like, that, that is a Jenny pink and I must buy this now for Jenny and um, make socks for her. So it was like, it was perfect. So that was at Sweater Weather, which is a new yarn show that um, just started this year. It's linked to Unravel, which usually runs in February, the end of February, um, which is at Farnham, and then they've started up this September one called Sweater Weather. So um, it was good, it was quite quiet, but I didn't mind that. Like, as a visitor, it was really nice to be able to walk around and see things and have actual chats with people because all too often UK yarn shows are really, really busy and you end up doing like the show shuffle because you can barely walk a metre because there are so many people. So it was actually really quite refreshing to be able to walk around and have a chat and see the stock properly and what vendors had to vend. Um, what else did I get from there? I... Um, <laughs> there's so much. 
I went and saw Johnny and Sally at Garthena, obviously, and I picked up three shades of their um, Beacons yarn, which is a DK weight, and it's they, they sell it in 50 gram skeins, which is really helpful as a designer because it means that I can use more colours. I'm always aware of how much money people can spend on yarn and I don't like yarn wastage and I don't really like like I don't really want people to have like 50 grams left so the fact that they do it in f in 50 gram skeins is helpful because I can use more colors and it just allows me to be a little bit more flexible with patterns so the three shades were Tuscany which is um it's kind of a Claret, bordering on maroon colour, light maroon. Then there's also baked crimson, which is kind of like a tomato red, but a little bit browner than that. Um, I think on the screen it's probably showing up a, bit, a little brighter than it actually is. And then paired those two with koi, which is like a dirty peachy pink. On face value, that sounds like red, peachy pink and claret would not go together. But because these are all quite muddy colours, they actually work really well together. And I've crocheted up a sample in this already to see how it works. And they work beautifully. So I'm very pleased with how they have come together. Um, these were bought for a design. I'm thinking of like maybe like a little poncho or something like that, but something quite colourful. Um, so yeah, watch this face for that. I, I got more of Beacons as well in, um, it's a colourway called Blazer, which is a proper warm French blue, like a, a French navy. And the reason that I got this is because while I was in the queue at Sweater Weather for coffee, I just saw how somebody pushed up the brim of their hat and it looked, it was totally unintentional on their part, but it just sparked a design idea in me. And this is what I have absolutely loved about my month is that I've been out there again. We went to London at the beginning of the month and went and saw Hamilton, which was amazing. Um, just feels like our lives are opening out a little bit. Obviously, we're still wearing masks. Obviously, we're disinfecting. We're being careful and we're protecting people. And we're doing lateral flow tests before we go anywhere major. Um, but if we know we're safe and we're going out to go somewhere, it's just been amazing to have my creativity re-spark. Like walking around London in the architecture, I was seeing patterns in almost everything. And um, same at Sweater Weather, just like a, you cannot underestimate as a creative how important it is to get out of your four walls and go and have different information, different colours different influences like crashing over you in waves it was just phenomenal and I came home and Matthew was like you're right and I was like just so many ideas so many ideas and it was just amazing so I had no intention of buying this yarn um, however when I saw that hat it just pinged an idea for a new crochet hat for me and I was like oh that could work and then Garth and I were next door to Ishrat at Fruitful Fusion and I got a skein from her, which is on her DK um, weight base, which is merino nylon. And the colourway is called denim and it's like stonewashed denim. Because what I wanted to do is make the hat twice. Obviously, I can never just make something once. Um, and I wanted to be able to show it in a um, self-coloured yarn and also in a lightly variegated yarn. Um, but you like subtle variegated because it's all still blues. The hat that I want to do needs to be quite simple in terms of the yarn choice to make it work properly. So another design in the making. One of the reasons that I was so excited to go to Sweater Weather is because Maya from the Wool Barn was vending there. And I have coveted her yarn for years now and I've never seen her at a yarn show. I've never been able to go and get like up close and personal to her yarn. And I've watched her dye journey over the years and see her settle into the lovely muddy earthy tones I just adore. And so I made sure that I went to her stand. I had a really good chat with her about um, 
crochet, about crochet representation. Um, I, she was speaking about Murit, she'd already seen it, she was like blown away by it. And it was just it was just one of those good chats. Sometimes I leave a yarn vendor stand and I'm like, they have no interest in crochet. They just don't get it. It's not something that they're ever going to do and I just walk away. But if I can have a decent chat with somebody about crochet and genuinely like get them to think about crochet in a different light, then I'm happy to support them as dyers. And that was the case with Maya. So I picked up three skeins. This is going to be a shawl. I know exactly what the shawl is going to look like. I just need to work it up. I'm really, really, really excited about this because I just, I want my design to work. Um, so the first one is called Waterfall and it is quite a deep slate blue. And I'm pairing that with two other colours, Chestnut, which is um, a really warm brown with a hint of pink. Um, going almost going into a claret colour. And then the final one is called Walnut, which is a warm peachy brown colour. And those three together are... <laughs> they are so fake. Like, it's, they are ridiculously me. Um, I just... I. I just love them and there was only one there was one skein left of the chestnut and I nearly walked away and thought no think about it and come back and I was like I know I'll come back and it will have sold just buy it buy it buy it so that is a skein in um, that's three skeins that are going to be uh, a shawl a crocheted shawl so one of the reasons I was down at sweater weather is because I had to go and pick up a, a log burner we are eventually going to be doing up the living room, which in a house like this, is a, it's a Victorian um, semi-detached house. The living room was always called the parlour and it was like the Sunday best room. It was the room that had the best of the furniture. It was like the adult room and it was generally only used for Sundays or for visitors coming around. And at the moment we have an open coal fire in there, which we don't want. We want to put a log burner in, but... I, we don't want to buy a new log burner and we don't want a black one. So I found on eBay the most amazing teal blue enameled log burner. And she's beautiful. And I can see she's a she because she actually has the name Sylvia on the top. And she's art deco styled and she's gorgeous. But she was kind of on the way to sweater weather or on the way back from sweater weather. And so obviously I had to go to sweater weather and go and pick up a log burner. And on the way, you would just go to your yarn shop as well, wouldn't you? <laughs> no. Um, so I dropped into Froom Yarn Collective, as was, about a day later after I was there, they changed their name to All About the Yarn. And I met um, Janet and Nikki, hello. And it was just, it's just a wonderful little yarn shop. Froom is gorgeous. If you've never been, oh, I messaged Matthew though I was down there and I was like, we're going to spend a weekend in Froome soon because it's like cobbled streets going up the hill. It was just a really lovely feeling town. Loads of independent shops. It just felt really nice. It was like the kind of place where you could just sit and sip coffee all day and people watch and just like a really nice little town. Um, so I've, and I've been meaning to get to Froome Yarn Collective for ages and I just haven't quite made it that far south so I made the extra journey to make sure that I could um, get there after sweater weather so I left sweater weather early to go and go into Froome and they had a new yarn dye that I've never come across before called Kissy and it's high down, high down hand dyed yarns <laughs> there's my new word nemesis hand dyed yarns and I think um, the person that runs Kissy used to be in Basel and I think she's now just outside Froome and the colourway that I got is called Silver Birch and it's in two 50 gram hanks and it is all the greens and greys and a little bit of like I'm going into a more turquoisey colour, a little bit of speckles. Sounds disgusting as I'm um, saying it, but actually it's really lovely. And I think this is just this is just going to be socks. And I'm, I've linked to Kissy in the show notes. And I think their thing is they um, they do one-offs. 
So it's one of a kind. There aren't repeatables. So when you see something, just go and get it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting them on the needles. These are definitely going to be socks. I think they might have to be socks for me because I'm worth it. Maybe somebody else, but probably for me because I really love the colours. Um, so that was what I got from from Young Collective. But I will go back there. Matty and I will go and have a weekend there. And I will spend more time in their yarn shop. And it was really lovely. They were so excited about Murit. I took a copy down to show them. And they are, uh, were already signed up as um, wholesalers. And like genuine excitement about crochet which was just it was really nice to see and then last weekend I was at Yarndale I went on the Sunday we didn't have loads of time there and I had a few worky things to do I was quite targeted in who I needed to go and see and what I needed to do and um, first of all I went to go and see Jess at Olan this is another one that I've been meaning to see this wool for about 12 months now. Um, Jess lives in Cavan in Ireland and she started up a mini mill and I've been watching with great interest to see what she is pushing through her mini mill and what the spin is like and Yarn Deal was the first time I had the actual opportunity to go and feel it. I've been checking it out online but it was one of those because it's the first mini mill in Ireland. Like it's the first time yarn has been properly spun on that level in Ireland for some time. She's doing something a bit different, and I just I wanted to feel it because you you just don't get that over the internet. Um, so I was not disappointed, and I bought two skeins, and I had a really good chat with Jess as well about how it's going, like the pitfalls, how she's finding it with the fibre side of things, the learning curve over the mini mill. It was really interesting. So I've linked to her website in the show notes. But the two skeins I bought, unsurprisingly, are blue. <laughs> Muddy blue. Um, one is a mid, like, loch blue. And the other is a lighter, slightly grey blue. And the two play really nicely together. And um, it feels lovely. And I just, I'm really excited for her. I'm really excited that she's doing something different. And it's obviously been a steep learning curve but like she's one of these people that I watch and she also dyes like on standard basis and her colours are beautiful she just has an eye for it and a lot of her photography has got like a darkness to it I don't mean like a sadness I just mean like that it's quite muted it's quite greyed out and it's absolutely stunning Um, yeah she's like Definitely, if you haven't checked her out, go and have a look at Olan. So it's O L E W M. Really beautiful stuff. And then I hit up the Revenant stand, obviously. I had already asked Becky Marcus to keep back a project bag for me. They are working with um, somebody called Hannah, who is Bruff's handwear, and Hannah does weaving. And she has woven fabric using river and its colours and wool so this is um British uh, sorry yeah British blue face Leicester it is backed with British felted wool fabric it has got natural linen on the inside Hannah has sewn it all together added the leather strap added all of the bits and it's uh, just it's a beautiful project bag and I think they've got three different colours and I was so tempted, like I would have loved one of each, but that would have been quite expensive. This is a proper little treat for me. Um, and in the end, I plumbed for the blue and <laughs> rusty orange colour because it matches my kitchen, living room and bedroom. So wherever my project bag is, it's just going to become part of the decor, which I just thought was brilliant. Um, it's lovely. I haven't used it yet because I've been keeping it special for you lot so you can see it. But it is going, um, it's going into use very shortly. Really nicely done. Beautiful piece of manufacturing. The weaving is gorgeous. And it is a lighter blue, um, darker blue, like a, a dusky rose pink 
and little pops of the rust orange and it's done in a linear pattern it's absolutely stunning like the quality of this is amazing um like i say it was a little treat to purchase and i love it <laughs> i've been working my backside off recently and i was like i'm i'm having me a bag i'm having a nice little project bag that i can sit and really appreciate every time i'm working away on a design and I'm kind of heads down working on it. This will be something that I'll look at every now and then. Just be like, oh, you're lovely. I bought you as a treat because I work really hard. And it's good to remind yourself of that sometimes. Um, so that was the bag. And then I also got, we're nearly done, I promise. Three skeins of the Rivernet's silver colour, which is in their Nain, which is 100% British Blueface Leicester. And the colour is called Silver Mond, which is basically Silver Moon. And um, this is going to be a knitted version of my Stormy Rainbow Blanket. And we spent a good 20 minutes picking out colours. My friend Sam and Becky and I with like mini skeins coming up my arm as we swapped one in, put another one in and tried to get the right colour combination. And essentially what I've ended up with is 12 minis which are like a Scottish rainbow. Basically, that's the best way that I can describe it. It's going from um, lovely warm teals into greens, into um, darker teals, coming through petrols, um, petrol blue, into purples, kind of fuchsia pinks, and back through purples. And as like a round of colour, they work really nicely together. And it's just like, this is Scotland. This is the colours of my childhood. It's the colours of the sea and the heather and the moor and the grasses and the seaweeds and the lichens. This is this is Scotland for me. Um, I'm hugely influenced by my upbringing in Scotland. I lived there for many, many years before I defected and moved south. Um, and this is just, the, these colours with the light grey of silver wand are just going to look beautiful together. I'm very excited to be able to get this onto my needles, but I have a couple of other projects to get out of the way first. Um, so that is like quite a lot of stash, but there are plans for pretty much most of them, and that's me got like my design stuff for the until the end of the year and going into next year so uh, that makes me quite happy frankly because it means I've been up I've chosen the colours with my own eyeballs not having to trust what's on the screen I've squished the yarn I know what it's going to be and I know that it's right for the project and that that's huge as a designer, like just knowing that it is the right thing for what it is you want at the end of your design process. It's really hard to replicate online, I have to say. So like, you can understand my excitement uh, for going back into yarn shows, not vending at them and actually being able to go around and hug people and just like, just see my people again. It was so nice. I saw... Um, Oh, it was so lovely at Yarndale. I saw Sarah Hazel, who's a crochet designer. She's just lovely. She always works on Jenny Crow's um, stand. She does quite a lot of work with Jenny, I think. And it was just one of those where <laughs> our eyes met across the alleyway and she was just like, Fee! It was like, Sarah! It was like, are you hugging? Yes, I'm hugging. And it was like proper heartfelt hugs. I think I hugged her three times because... Those are the interactions that I've really been missing, and it was just, it was just so nice to see her and catch up and just, and, and there was loads of those interactions. It was just really, really wonderful. Um, I met um, Sandra at at Sweater Weather as well. It was just, it was just, it was just so nice to see people. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and the other thing that came through. Is my Merit magazine, like my own, my personal copy from the Kickstarter came through. And I see from Instagram that all of yours has been coming through as well. And the reaction to it has been fabulous. I went for one of the extended packages. So I also got a skein of Rivernet's Nain in um, their mustardy colourway called Ernt Dank. 
which has got a bit of um, like a kind of it's a bit of a brownie mustard um and I lo I just love this yarn I use it a lot it's the same one as the silver wand it's the same one as the mini skeins it just works up really beautifully for crochet and knitting and that will hit my stash I don't have a plan for that it was all about supporting Murit with the most amount of money that I possibly could so that's why I did that with the Kickstarter so that's a lot of yarn isn't it <laughs> uh, I have no guilt over this this is my livelihood this is what makes me happy this is this is my thing this is what I spend money on I love it there's so much of it though <laughs> I feel like I could like throw it up in the air and have yarn raining down on me with the amount that I've got in front of me <laughs> All gorgeous. So a couple of quick, quick news bits for you. Um, this month's global hookups are going to be on Saturday the 16th of October at 8pm and Sunday the 17th of October at 9am. If you've not joined us before and you're a little anxious about it, then the Sunday morning is probably the better option for you because it's just a bit more chilled. Um, and as I always say, you can come and not put your video on, you can come and not put your audio on. Feel free to just come and join us in the chat and check it out and see whether it's for you or not. There really is zero pressure on this for you. Just come and join if you fancy joining. Um, but it's always a nice session. It's always lovely to be with other crafters. And the reason we do it in those two splits is... <clears throat> the Saturday night tends to suit people that are in the Northern Hemisphere and on the Sunday morning it can suit people better that are late night America or um, Australia basically. So I'm trying to hit both time zones So um, and we get people from all over the world. It's really lovely. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to say is that loads of you viewed the podcast on Instagram last month don't think the captions worked i don't know why i need to investigate that again this month and try and get it to work but basically i'm just trying to offer new places it's really difficult to get the auto captions to work on youtube and um, if you don't want the advertising and you don't want to have to deal with the youtube algorithms then my plan is to always put the podcast up on Instagram as well now because it just works and it's easy and lots of people are more wedded to their phones now than they are to bigger screens and to laptops and to computers. So it feels like a good reason to make it available on Instagram. So that will happen now from every month from now on in. It has been added to my podcasting standard operation procedure because there are so many bits and pieces that I have to do for the podcast that um, I, I have to keep a massive to-do list. So it's been added to that and hopefully I will be able to sort out the um, the auto captions and get them sorted. I've been testing the auto captions on my stories over the last couple of days and they're reasonably accurate, like the strike rate is really good. So I'm hoping that whatever the auto caption software is that they have on Instagram is really good at dealing with my Scottish accent and uh, it should be reasonably accurate um, when I get the captions done for the podcast. So from now on in, this podcast is available audio via Podbean and all of your favourite other places like Apple Music, I, um, Spotify, all of those places you can catch the audio version. The video version is now available on YouTube and also on Instagram. Show notes go out every single month and they're always um, linked via my website, which is provenancecraft.com. And if you want to, you can sign up for the newsletter, which means I will send you the links to every podcast on the first Friday of the month. So literally, I press publish everywhere. I move those links into the newsletter form and then I press send on the newsletter usually at 10 o'clock every Friday on the first Friday of the month. So that's your best way of keeping up to date with 
um, where I've got all of the um, bits and pieces for you to come and find the podcast. Right. I think I have one last thing to say, which is a big up. And as I already mentioned, Murit has been coming through all of our doors. And I know that the response to this has been overwhelmingly positive. It has just been amazing. I also had the pleasure of being able to watch people, being able to interact with Alison Stand at Sweater Weather. And when she went and did her talk at Yarndale, I covered her stand for an hour. So I got to actually interact with customers who didn't know who I was, whether they thought I was like the editor, I don't know. But I saw the interactions that people had firsthand and they kind of split down into two camps. Camp one was newer crocheters and knitters who could not believe that what they were seeing on the stand, all of the samples were crochet. Camp two was more experienced crocheters who were literally giddy, like giddy kippers with the idea of crochet being represented in this way and being shown in a new light and being moved forward. And it was just, it was so exciting to see people's reaction to Murit and like the new wave of crochet coming through. I just, I loved it. Totally loved it. So my big up is to Alison, who is editor-in-chief at Murit magazine. Alison, you have done an amazing job for us. You have, in my opinion, properly represented crochet. You've shown what it is as a craft, what it can be, and what it's heading towards. And globally, you have set the scene for crochet to keep on moving up through the levels. And quite frankly, for people to stop taking the mickey out of it, like I'm done with it, <laughs> this shows you what crochet can be and what crochet is for many of us. And I just think... Alison has done an amazing job and she's an absolute crochet superstar so she is my big up for this month because Moora is flaming brilliant absolutely love it, it is total quality, it's a quality quality, thick, beautiful gorgeous publication and on that note I am done thank you so much for joining me it is always lovely to spend time with you. It is always nice to see your comments on Instagram and on YouTube and just the interactions that we have are really special. So uh, thank you for all of that. I love the Crochet Clan. I love what you do. Thank you also, like Heartfelt, for my patrons. You allow me to do so much more because of your financial support. So thank you to you. It's just, it's lovely. Right, I'm off. I have a podcast to edit in about, well, I've got an hour and a half to do it. So, wish me luck. <laughs> See you soon. Bye-bye. Waving. And hurting my elbow and waving. <laughs> <laughs>